Hello, in this video we are going to teach you how to do the infamous bed bug heat treatment. Now pay attention, this is a treatment that separates the man tex from the boy tex, okay? And we are dealing with large amounts of flammable liquid propane gas and large amounts of the heat that liquid propane gas generates that can do damage. So in order to make sure that you are not doing excessive damage other than killing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the bed bugs, pay very close attention to this video so you know how to perform an effective heat treatment. Now, this video is going to focus on an effective propane heat treatment, okay? Now, our propane systems are 50,000 BTU systems connected to two 30 gallon propane tanks, okay? So the very first thing you have to do is have performed an effective bed bug inspection. If you do not know how to perform an effective bed bug inspection, I recommend you watch this, uh, the video uh, about how to perform an effective bed bug inspection. But anyway, in that inspection, you will have identified the places where the bugs are harboring themselves, okay? You will have also given a prep sheet to the customer so they know how to prepare the room uh, for the heat treatment. Basically that preparation requires that they move all of their furniture towards the center of the house so you can create a heat vortex in the room, okay? The very first thing you're going to do is show up to the property, okay? You're going to unload all of the bed bug heat equipment that has been secured inside of one of our trailers, generally to the walls, okay? Make sure you re-secure it when you put it back. The very first thing you're going to take out is um, the actual heat system itself, okay? And you're going to set it up in an area that is closest to where the heat treatment area is, okay? Um, you lose a lot of temperature in the ducting as it goes throughout the house. So you wanna make sure that the device is as close to the infestation point as possible, but it still has to be outside for ventilation reasons. Let's just assume that this is the room that we are going to set up for a heat treatment because maybe this couch had such horrendous bed bugs in it that we needed to heat treat the room in order to kill the bed bugs in the couch. The very first thing we're going to have to do is establish a heat vortex, meaning we're going to have to set up the air movers throughout this room so that in every nook and cranny in every square inch and corner, there is a circulation of air, okay? This means that we're going to have to move these pieces of furniture that are right next to the wall at least 36 inches away from the wall so we can easily stick an air mover behind them. Okay, let's try that out. It's best wherever you can to move any of the objects towards the center of the room. Okay, that one we don't have to move actually because it's more than 36 inches away. Be very careful in this process if you have to do it to make sure you don't scratch the floor or do anything you might be liable for. Now customers are supposed to do this for you before you show up. However, in cases of elderly people, single moms who don't have a lot of time, uh, just people that kind of forgot this or didn't think that applied, uh, you might find yourself moving things often. Ask the homeowner to do it when possible. Um, however, sometimes you may have to move it yourself. If so, make sure that you use your knees, don't use your back, and make sure you give yourself plenty of room to put the air movers behind the piece of furniture. Now, you wanna make sure that anything that is in a cardboard box gets taken out of the cardboard box. For some reason, cardboard boxes, they're good heat barriers and bed bugs can survive inside of shoe boxes and cardboard boxes. Um, also, anything that even is just decorative might wanna be taken away from the wall, even just a little bit, because it might impede that airflow. Now for the purposes of this training video, we're going to assume that this chimney is not here. 
uh, if we did have to treat a room that had a chimney or had some kind of large flue in which the heat could escape, you would actually have to dust around the area of the chimney, not into the chimney, but anywhere where the bed bugs might be able to hide and treat it locally. And then you would have to be able to seal it off with just another moving blanket or uh, some other kind of heat barrier that would keep the bed bugs or the heat meant to kill the bed bugs inside of the room. You always have to be thinking, how can heat escape before it does its job and stop that from happening? Now we're going to bring in all the air movers and show you how to set up the air movers. So now you will notice that in each one of the corners, I have put in a pretty significantly powerful air mover. And what this is going to do is it is going to create a heat vortex in which all of the air will be continuously circulated through each one of these air movers. And as the tube, the main duct comes in, which is also pushing air, the pressure will change and the entire system will begin to circulate very quickly because latent heat is what we're looking for, meaning the heat that comes off of the hot air as it travels. Studies show also that slightly moist air also um, gets hotter and does a better job with latent heat as well. So um, you need in a room like this at least four air movers. If you have more, there's a good argument that maybe putting one right there would be helpful in what might become a dead spot of circulation. Your job before you start heating is to test that air vortex. So right now, let's go, let's plug in these fans, and let's see how we feel about this room. A lot of these picture frames, especially the smaller ones and the lighter weight ones, began to uh, start swaying in the wind. You don't want to damage a picture, picture frame by blowing it off the wall. So it's a good idea just simply to remove these and stick them towards the center of the room. However, before you leave them in the center of the room, you want to do a brief inspection of them because a very common place for bed bugs to hide, especially near the headboard of a bed, is in the cracks and crevices of a picture frame. In fact, in this inspection, you can see that I did in Hawthorne, there's actually quite a few bed bugs behind uh, each one of the picture frames that were next to the person's bed. So make sure that you take a look at the inside of these picture frames and then you place them towards the center of the room. You have to be very careful. You have to be very careful with pictures. Um, most, most pictures, uh, most photographs can withstand the, uh, the treatment of a heat job. However, especially very old or sensitive pictures, you might consider treating just individually, um, inspecting it. If you don't need to treat it, then just remove it. And if you do need to treat it, maybe using some kind of dust in inconspicuous areas. Um, because if you do go too high in heat, not only will you melt objects in the room, but you could possibly damage photographs. So now that I've taken everything off the wall, and I've placed the air movers, I go back and test, and um, I'm going to further isolate this room to make sure the heat stays in, and then we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so if you are going to try and do a propane tr treatment in a room, you need to put moving blankets or some kind of thermal barrier over any open spaces, okay? Now, on the inside of a house, this is a really nice door frame, and you don't wanna just staple straight into a door frame and have these big holes. So a trick that is good to do is staple on the top and on the outside of the door frame where people don't notice. So we're gonna start out and just do a couple of easy breezy staples either into the drywall or onto the top of the door frame where nobody will notice. And the least amount of staples as is necessary is the best. Over here, what I'll do then is I will also come down and I'll staple one on the side in an inconspicuous area there, and then maybe another one on the side in an inconspicuous area there. That way, this room is virtually sealed off. Now, don't worry about this bottom gap because out of this bottom gap, okay, whoops. Out of this bottom gap with a little bit of air escape, and if too much is escaping, I can roll another moving blanket 
and place it on the bottom, just like you do with draft barriers in restaurants or in apartment buildings. Here's also a little side note that you should understand. You wanna make sure you don't load up these blankets with too many staples because you do need area for the air to escape. We're pushing a lot of air into the room and an equal volume of air has to be able to exit the room. So you're not trying to make it airtight by any means. A lot of new technicians, uh, to them it seems counterintuitive to have large gaps open when you're doing a heat treatment. But trust me, you are pouring so much heat out of that 50,000 BTU heater that um, you don't have to worry about there being gaps. And another reason why you don't wanna put in too many of these staples is because ultimately, you're going to have to take them out. And when you go to take them out, okay, you want them to be easily accessible. Sometimes I use my multi-tool and pliers to get them out. Other times I'm just able to lift the blanket and they're left in the blanket. And make sure you take these out as you go along. You don't wanna be the technician that grabs a different moving blanket that another technician used and forgot to take out the staples and cut your finger. Now, in this case, we're going to staple back up another moving blanket, but instead of using the large blue ones, I'm going to use one of the thin black door frame ones. So once again, as inconspicuously as I can, we're going to staple up the moving blanket. On a side note, if you ever do make visible holes that maybe the customer sees, just go over those holes with a little bit of the dap that we use on other German cockroach jobs or a little bit of spackle and it won't even be noticeable. Yes, that's true. Some other people that aren't six foot six might be required to stand on some form of stool in order to reach these areas. Hashtag just saying, hashtag we do not judge. Now for ease of entry, when we go in once every 15 minutes to check on the um, temperature of the room, we're gonna leave this little flap a little bit open. This will also be somewhat of a pressure valve so the air escaping from the room will kind of blow this door open just a little bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect the ducting to the Titan and then into the treatment area. So let's start out with our 25 feet of mylar ducting, okay? This is really simple. This is the same kind of ducting that air conditioners have. A couple of rips here or there in the ducting isn't really gonna matter a lot because this uh, heater is putting out 50,000 BTUs and some serious CFM. So uh, don't sweat it if there's an occasional crack. You can also just um, repair it with duct tape. And it's pretty self-explanatory. What you do is you just take the duct, put it over the front of the Titan. Make sure you don't cover this hole right here. There's a small hole here that we're going to put the thermometer for uh, the Titan in later. So make sure you don't cover it. Um, and then just make sure that the ducting comes up on the side and then you see these little flanges here, this little mechanism here. You push it down and it clamps on the ducting. Same with the exact same other side. This way, the ducting will not come off. Now, take the rest of your ducting, let's go inside to the treatment area. Now in this case, I've decided I am going to go straight into the treatment area through the smallest door. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away this little roll of moving blankets that I had before, okay? And what I'll actually do is I will take one of the moving blankets and put it on the floor. So hopefully the duct isn't touching too many areas of this nice wooden floor. You want to protect the wooden floor of the customers as much as possible. Also, since this moving blanket kind of already comes over halfway over the ducting. 
then um, uh, we have some, some room for some, some airflow here uh, when the air comes pouring out.